We're here at the American Bonanza Society's annual convention and trade show, the portion of it that takes place at the South Valley Regional Airport near Salt Lake City. Again, it's going to be a hangar party here in a few minutes, and we're catching a few minutes with Tom Turner, who is the manager of technical services for the society. Tom, you have written about, we keep seeing a lot of, one of the most frustrating causes of accidents ever, and that is people running out of gas, for lack of a better term. Whether it's fuel exhaustion uh, or, you know, just other problems with fuel systems, it seems like that ought to be the most basic thing. We don't have that happening in cars much. Why does it, how can you go up in the sky and not know you have enough fuel? Well, you know, that's something I've really been trying to wrap my arms around. First, to define a couple of terms, uh, there are two different types of fuel mishaps, fuel starvation and fuel exhaustion. Fuel starvation is where you have fuel somewhere on board your aircraft, but for whatever reason, it's not getting to the engine. Fuel exhaustion is simply running out of gas, and both of them are really perplexing situations from an instructor pilot standpoint, trying, trying to address. I think there are a couple of factors that I think are involved in fuel-related mishaps are, number one, the complexity of aircraft fuel systems. The older the airplane is, typically, with some exceptions, the more complex the fuel system is and the less operator-friendly it is. Get back into uh, airplanes of, let's say, the, the 1950s and 60s vintage, and you, ha you may have an airplane with four independently selectable tanks, but only one fuel gauge. And when you switch tanks, you have to remember not only do I switch tanks, but I also have to switch the fuel, select or the fuel indicator so I know which tank I'm looking at. Another issue is that pilots tend to think about their fuel endurance in terms of cruise fuel burn. And if normally I fly a trip that uh, causes me to climb 6,000 feet above ground level, I cruise for a certain amount of distance and then I descend and land, after a while I start to have a feel that my airplane is good for four hours of endurance plus reserves. But then maybe I'll get into an unusual situation for me uh, because of terrain or weather or for whatever reason. On today's flight, I climbed to 9,000 feet or 11,000 feet. And sometimes pilots don't seem to consider the fact that that puts them at a high fuel flow rate for a longer period of time. And it may be that a trip that was at the legal and safe limit of endurance turns into one that is just a little bit less than that uh, because they burn more fuel, the, the, the airplane burns more fuel than the pilot mentally thinks is, is involved in its endurance. All right, now there seemed to be some evidence, if I recall, over the past couple of years that technologically advanced aircraft, some of them that have uh, systems with fuel totalizers and flow meters and that sort of thing, were making a difference in the accident rates in some types. Is the fact that you keep seeing it in Bonanzas partly due to the fact that there's some very old airframes flying around out there? Well, that's it, and I have actually looked at that specific thing. It, w it was a a rumor, if you will, around Wichita in, in not just Beechcraft but Cessna and and all that there had never been a fuel-related mishap in a glass cockpit airplane, in a full Avidyne or G1000 piston airplane. And so I looked to see if I could bust that myth or if I could confirm it. And at that point, actually, which was about one year ago, it was true. The fuel level depiction in those airplanes is superior. The interface with GPS and totalizers to be able to, in some cases, even depict a fuel ring on a moving map display has seemed to have licked the problem for the most part. Now, since that time, there has been at least one fuel starvation situation I'm aware of in a glass cockpit airplane. It happened to be a G36 Bonanza, but it could have just as easily been any other glass cockpit make and model of aircraft because it was very clearly a pilot planning issue. And the pilot did survive and discuss this with the NTSB. Uh, so superior technology in the form of uh, display and interface with moving maps of fuel levels does seem to make a big difference. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, 
advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com.